Honestly, when somebody goes, well, why do you worship the Holy Ghost? Well, the first point that we're going to have here is that he is God, and that should settle it. Well, today, I would like to begin a series on why we worship the Holy Ghost. That seems to be a good question because, you know, a lot of people don't. A lot of people find that to be a strange thing that comes to the ear. Well, why do you guys worship the Holy Ghost when it seems like others don't? Well, the Holy Ghost said to me not too long ago, he said, if they knew me as God, they would worship me. So the problem is that people don't know him, the Holy Ghost, as God. If they knew me as God, they would worship me. Well, the fact is, he is God, and if you're hungry for more of God, you're going to be hungry for more of the Holy Ghost. And I think people understand that. They know, oh, I want more of the Holy Ghost. Well, he's God, and worshiping him will enable him to come into your life in a way that he can't up until now. So did you find First Peter? First Peter chapter 3 and verse 15. But sanctify the Lord God in your heart and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you you see well we worship the Holy Ghost so we need to have a good reason to give to people when they go well, why do you worship the Holy Ghost well, I'm hoping for those of you who do worship the Holy Ghost that this message tonight will give you a good answer to give people, right? It says, have an answer. So you'll have a good answer of why you worship the Holy Ghost. And people who don't worship the Holy Ghost, this message tonight should give you a good reason to start worshiping the Holy Ghost. You see, the fact is, He is God. Well, that should settle it. Honestly, when somebody goes, well, why do you worship the Holy Ghost? Well, the first point that we're going to have here is that he is God, and that should settle it. Do you worship God? So he is as much God, this probably will bug people, it shouldn't, it's included in their doctrine. He, the Holy Ghost, is as much God as Jesus is and the Father is, and therefore deserving of worship. Now, I really don't have a problem if somebody wants to worship Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I worship you. Or the Father, Father, I worship you in Jesus' name. I don't have a problem with that. But why do they have a problem if you go, Holy Ghost, I worship you? The Holy Ghost is as much God as the Father or Jesus and deserving of worship. And in my estimation, I'm going to get into this as we go on here, even more so, he's deserving of our worship because number one, he's God. Number two, it's his time. It's his dispensation. We're in the Holy Ghost dispensation. It is time. It's his time. Worshiping him may seem unusual at first. I know it did to me. Anybody else who's done it, they go, oh, I worship you, Holy Ghost. It seems a little unusual at first, but so did speaking in tongues. You remember that? Or so did laying on of hands. It all seems a little bit unusual because it's foreign to you. You don't understand it. You haven't been exposed to it. and You haven't done it enough to where it becomes common. Are you still here? Most people give lip service to this doctrine that the Holy Ghost is equal with the Father and Jesus. Most people give lip service to it. Their, their doctrine says that. Do you understand this? If you look up their doctrine at the church you attend, it says that the Holy Ghost is as much God as Jesus and the Father is. But they have no follow through with the rest of their doctrine. It stops there. It's just a statement of lip service. Because if he was co equal, if he was God, then they should worship him. But there's silence in that area. There is no Holy Ghost worship. The words, I worship you, Holy Ghost, is foreign in almost every church. In fact, they, they look at you strangely. But this must change. So why do I preach on this so much? Frankly, it's a message I've been given, and I have to be faithful to preach the message that I've been given. Do you understand that? It makes sense if somebody was given a specific message on healing. 
right then they would go forth and they would preach healing all the time but here we have so a lot of my ministry a lot of my messages are kind of has an emphasis on the Holy Ghost and worshiping the Holy Ghost why because I was specifically given that message to bring forth but you know I've been accused of of not preaching other things well they just don't know I wrote I wrote these down just off the top of my head things that I've preached on I've preached other things here's a short list that I could just think of off the top of my head repentance I've preached on repentance I've preached on forgiveness I've preached on righteousness I've preached on the love of God I've preached on faith you ever hear me preach on faith I've preached on healing and the atonement I've preached on the blood of Jesus the name of Jesus the gifts of the Spirit I was gonna bring out all the CDs that we have freely available online I've preached on hope I've preached on the gifts of the Spirit I've preached on the fear of the Lord holiness deliverance prayer prosperity tithing soundness of mind renewing the mind you remember any of these the baptism and the Holy Ghost laying out of hands water baptism communion confession the power of speaking God's Word the power of speaking in other tongues fasting you don't preach on anything I preach on fasting youth renewal etc this is a short list most of which all of those things most of which I've spent at least three weeks you sometimes six weeks on every single one of those topics so to only say that I only I only talk about the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost worship well you know that's just that's really weak as far as a criticism goes now that I've said that we worship the Holy Ghost and Holy Ghost worship changes everything that's why you know I a lot of people will hear what I'm saying or hear and it, and it hits their ear foreign because it's coming from a place of Holy Ghost worship which has changed things it's different and they understand it's different they recognize it's different a lot of people don't want to go there where don't they want to go they don't want to worship God God who God the Holy Ghost who's in the earth today I go to Acts chapter 24 verse 14 but this I confess unto thee that after the way which they call heresy so worship I the God of my fathers well as we're gonna see the God of your fathers who was he he was the Holy Ghost I will show you this just hold on so you know they may call it heresy so worship I the God of my fathers believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets verse 16 says and herein do I exercise myself that's why I read that list because aside from worshiping the Holy Ghost we believe just about all of the other things that everybody else believes as long as they're believing things you know if they're describing it as it passed away or something well then you know we're not in that group but we do believe all of these things you understand but we believe in worshiping the Holy Ghost which it puts a different emphasis on it that frankly you can't even understand until you begin to worship the Holy Ghost it says we believing all things which are written in the law we preach out of this Bible where we're saying all of these things but it says we worship God so worship I the God of my father so go with me to uh, revelations all the way to the back of your Bible well, let's just start at the end and work our way back how about that let's see here Revelation chapter 19 and verse 10 and I fell at his feet to worship him and he said unto me see thou do it not for I am thy fellow servant he's talking about an angel and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus worship God is this in your Bible yeah it says worship God now you really shouldn't have to tell people this but you do what should you do to God you should worship him right so really now we just need to understand whether the Holy Ghost is God or not and if he is God then we should worship him according to this verse of Scripture right at the end of the Bible worship God and if we know him as God we'll worship him go back to Revelations chapter 2 let's read verse 7 now here we have we see the resurrected Lord Jesus appearing to the Apostle John in a vision 
and Jesus says to John he that has an ear to hear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches he didn't even say what I say so here's the resurrected Jesus speaking to John and saying he that has an ear to hear let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches now if you have Jesus saying he that has an ear to hear hear what the Spirit says what's Jesus saying he's saying what the Spirit says because the Holy Ghost is God I hope I'm getting this across just let this seep down in right and he goes on he says this time after time verse 11 he that has ears to hear let him hear what the Spirit saith verse 17 he that has ears to hear let him hear what the Spirit saith so who's doing the say a thing the Spirit is the one saying things so even Jesus resurrected speaking by the Spirit of God he's still speaking today you understand who the Holy Ghost he's saying things he was saying things then these things could apply to the church right let him hear what he's saying to the church who's saying it the Spirit is saying it to the church he's still speaking today you know often you'll look at a verse of scripture and you'll say that spirit that scripture spoke to me you ever said that you could say that if you read your Bible enough you'd be saying all oh, that scripture spoke to me who spoke to you the Holy Ghost spoke to you he's still speaking today Acts chapter 13 verse 2 as they ministered to the Lord and fasted the Holy Ghost said is he still saying things yeah he's still God he's still a divine person and he's still saying things he's a divine person who speaks he said the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them well who called who called Barnabas and Saul to the work no one would would argue if you said God called Barnabas and Saul yes. would they who called you God God who well specifically the Bible says the Holy Ghost said separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them so who called them the Holy Ghost and when they'd fasted and prayed they laid their hands on them and sent them away so they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost so the Holy Ghost called them and the Holy Ghost anointed them and the Holy Ghost set them forth who was the Holy Ghost at least back then he was God you understand a divine person in the earth speaking to people saying things go to second Peter brother it sounds like you believe the Holy Ghost is God well he is God and I'm trying to get you to see that he's God so that you can take the very next step which is to say I worship you Holy Ghost because you shouldn't worship anything or anyone other than God you understand that is any good mm -hmm. this should help people who do worship the Holy Ghost with answers and this should give answers to people who don't yet so they can start second Peter chapter 1 verse 20 knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation meaning it can speak to you for the prophecy the prophecy of the scripture came not in old time by the will of men but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost so these scriptures that we see here we hold in our hand were spoken and written down as they were moved by the Holy Ghost we would say oh these things are he the Holy Ghost therefore wrote these words do you see that 2nd Timothy 3 16 for all scripture now remember it was given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost right he he moved on men given by inspiration of the Holy Ghost here it says in, in verse 16 2nd Timothy chapter 3 16 all scripture is given by inspiration of God well we just read a verse of Scripture where it was spoken by the will of the Holy Ghost and then this scripture specifically calls him God are you getting this all scripture is given by inspiration of God we just read that they were moved by the Holy Ghost inspiration of the Holy Ghost the Bible specifically calls him God
God who? God the Holy Ghost. He's God. He's a divine person. He still speaks. He's still speaking today. He spoke these things. The Bible specifically calls him God. Go to, go to 1 Corinthians 3.16. Know you not that you are the temple of God. You are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you. The Spirit of God dwells in you therefore you are the temple of God you just flip that around who dwells in you God the Holy Ghost I'm a temple of God because God the Holy Ghost dwells in me does that make sense go over to chapter 6 1st Corinthians chapter 6 verse 19 what know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost he just said you're the temple of God Spirit of God dwells in you. Then he says, what? No, you're not. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. He, that's the name of the God who is in you. His name is Holy Ghost. Are you here? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God. You're not your own bought with a price. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify or worship God in your body. Are you here? Who do you worship? You should be worshiping the Holy Ghost because he's God. The Bible specifically calls him God. The Bible specifically tells us to worship God. He is God. Are you getting this? All right. Now go to uh, 2 Corinthians. And by the way, what, do you, what does a temple do? What do you do when you go to the temple? In the Old Testament, you go to the temple to worship God. Right? Now you are the temple, so I guess you can worship God all day long if you want to right and should well who do I worship you worship the Holy Ghost because you're the temple of him it's making sense why do you worship the Holy Ghost because he's God and I'm his temple 2nd Corinthians 6 verse 16 and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols and uh, for you are the temple of the dead God no you're the temple of the living God now who would that be got to be the Holy Ghost you are the temple of the living God as God hath said now remember take this all the way back to those other verses of Scripture that were written by inspiration of God the Holy Ghost right as God hath said said this in the Old Testament I will dwell in them who will dwell in them Holy Ghost I will walk in them who Holy Ghost and I will be their God see and they shall be my people that's not gonna happen if you don't worship the Holy Ghost you gotta worship God you know nobody'd have a problem with me saying that you gotta worship God take him by the color you gotta worship God if you want God right but then you tell them oh he's the Holy Ghost and they're like oh well I don't know that sounds like strange doctrine this is not strange doctrine this is straight out of chapter and verse you worship God the Holy Ghost are you getting this if you knew him as God you should worship him as God so we've seen so far we've seen all the way from the end of the Bible right in the book of Revelation that the Holy Ghost is God and we're supposed to worship God and then we're coming back through the epistles here uh, believe me there are many more and we'll get to more as we go on in this series how about the Gospels now I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be brief here because I've got a lot that I could say in the Gospels at a later time but let's go to uh, Luke I tell you you know I've been down this road so many times but every time you get something new presented to you it's uncomfortable it doesn't feel right at first but then it begins to feel like this is right and that other thing was not so right uh, Luke chapter 4 verse 14 and Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit he taught in their synagogues verse 15 being glorified of all verse 16 he came to Nazareth when he'd been brought up as his custom was he began to read he found the place in Isaiah now remember he's gonna read a scripture are you here which means the Holy Ghost said it in verse 18 he says the this is Jesus saying the Spirit of the Lord is upon me who did Jesus say was on him the Holy Ghost the Spirit of the Lord the Spirit of the Lord that would be the Holy Ghost 
for he he hath anointed me to preach who anointed Jesus to preach that would be the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. are you here yes. he didn't just know you know Jesus is not the Holy Ghost he didn't say the spirit of me is upon me the Holy Ghost came on Jesus as a divine person and began to speak to him and anointed him the Spirit of the Lord is upon me so there we see this in the in the Gospels I won't read too much of that we're going all the way back Isaiah 40 verse 13 who hath directed the Spirit of the Lord or being his counselor hath taught him think about this what is this implying that because he's God no one had to teach him anything who has directed the Spirit of the Lord nobody directs him in fact he was in the Gospels he was directing Jesus mm -hmm. because Jesus came as a man mm -hmm. you understand he set aside his deity and came as a man he had to have God directing him God who God the Holy Ghost who has directed the Spirit of the Lord or being his counselor has taught him nobody because he's God does this make sense is the Holy Ghost God well <laughs> yeah how about second Samuel you understand I can't read all of the verses that speak of the Holy Ghost being God but I can read some second Samuel and I picked these few because they they say specific things and we're giving a reason why we worship the Holy Ghost why we worship the Holy Ghost as opposed to somebody else who doesn't second Samuel 23 verse 2 the Spirit of the Lord spake are you there the Spirit of the Lord spake by me and his word was in my tongue who was speaking the Spirit of the Lord the Holy Ghost well was Samuel the prophet of God yeah was he required to say the things that God said yes and then he says it was the Spirit of the Lord that spake by him so the Spirit of the Lord is obviously God I hope you're getting this and if he is God he is deserving of your worship meaning you use the words and say them out your mouth I worship you Holy Ghost so let's go to Genesis I wonder if we can find anything in Genesis that speaks to the deity of the Holy Ghost and him being God I wonder shouldn't be too hard let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and let's look at verse 1 in the beginning somebody God right mm -hmm. God created the heaven and the earth and the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water here we have the first reference or description of any type at all in the Bible about who God is and it says the Spirit of God it didn't say Jesus floated on the face of the waters it didn't even say the Father it said the Spirit of God are you here yes. so am I being unscriptural to say that the Spirit is God because he is and worshiping him should be the first thing we do are you getting this so he is God and we see him as God we see him speaking thinking and acting as God well we have to assume then that he is God right mm -hmm. we see Adam and Eve knowing God as who as the Spirit of God he came to them in the cool or in the spirit of the day and they communed with him they knew him as God so here we go from Genesis all the way to Revelation or from Revelation all the way to Genesis we see him as God acting as God speaking as God and if we know him as God we should worship him and that's what you should do you should worship God John chapter 4 says this God is a spirit and they that worship him worship him in spirit and in truth Holy Ghost of God in the earth today Oh God.